In this updated tutorial in CyberLink Power Director, we're going to look at blending clips on your timeline. I have a clip on track number one of a gal driving down the road. And then I have a, another clip I put on track number two. Right now I've made that track inactive, but it's this color spectrum. We start with the darker colors at the bottom and go to the lighter ones at the top. We have a grayscale on the right side. Now, normally, when we use the default blending mode, and I'll activate track number two, we see that the item on the lower track or higher numbered track, however you want to refer to it, will override all the pixels of the track above it unless there's some transparency. And we have none here, so all we see is our color spectrum. But there are seven other blending modes that we can use in any particular moment. So let me overview some of them in this tutorial. Then we'll show a couple of interesting ways to use the blending modes. The default mode is normal, which means every pixel overrides the image above. How do you get to the other modes? You can right click on the bottom image, which is here called a preset. And then you click on Set Clip Attributes, and then you have an option called Set Blending Mode. Now you notice I can't see all of the drop downs here. Well, this isn't the way I usually go into the tool. I find the easier way is to highlight my lower clip on track two in this case, and then click on Tools and Power Tools and Blending Mode. Now it's more clicks, but the advantage is now I get to see all the modes at once and I can go from normal to the others and see the difference. So we're going to look at the differences in this case and then work it some, with some other clips and show you some other advantages to this. The default again is normal. Let's click to the second one down, which is darken. Now when we click on the darken blending mode, it retains the darkest pixels of all the media clips. So you notice we had the darker colors at the bottom. They're very heavily saturated here, and the lighter ones are overridden by the lighter colors in my movie with the gal, my video clip. Let's try another one. The second one is Multiply. Multiply is an interesting one because this blends the darkest pixels of my lower track and removes the lightest pixels of the lower track and makes them transparent. So the lighter pixels are actually disappeared and I'm seeing something more natural up here at the top. The third option we have is called Lighten. Now what Lighten does is it retains the lightest pixel colors of all the clips. So again we have the light colors of the lower clip and the light colors of the upper clip, and that's all we see in this particular uh, result. It's just the lighter pixels of both of them combined. The next one is called Screen. And what happens with Screen is it's the opposite of Multiply. The brightest pixels are retained, and the darkest pixels become transparent. So you notice our darker colors in our color spectrum are transparent. The lighter ones are the ones that we see in both cases. The next one is called Overlay. And with the Overlay blend, which is kind of an interesting blend, we have the effects of Multiply and Screen combined. So we have the lightest pixels and the darkest pixels, but the ones in the middle are basically untouched and this is a nice nice unique effect as you can see here it, it's a very intense kind of colorized effect using these two different clips together so I'll move my playhead back so we have more time to see the rest of them um, we'll click on tools uh, power tools get back to our blending mode and then the next one I want to use is difference difference gives you uh, something that looks like a negative, only it's a lot more colorful than a typical uh, photographic negative. It subtracts the brightest pixel color value from one clip to the other, and so it gives you a rather surrealistic view of what's going on here, but it does 
look a lot like a photographic negative. The next one is hue. A hue is interesting because it blends the hue from the lower image with the lightness and saturation of the upper image. And in this case, it's, it creates uh, quite an interesting scene as we look at the gal driving down the road. So those are the different blending modes. Now let's take a couple of other examples, see what we can find here. I'm going to move over in my project. This will give you a little bit of the same kind of look at this. Here I have the lower clip. It's all transparent except for the words. And now I'm going to adjust the blending mode. So I highlight my lower clip, click on Tools, Power Tools, and go back into the blend mode and get my screen up in the left. So normally all these letters will override uh, the screen below. That's my normal. If I go to darken, notice what happens again. The dark pixels went out. The white completely disappeared. The word white did. In multiply, again, here we have the uh, darkest pixels in the, the letters and it removes the lightest pixels by making them transparent. My white again is gone. Lighten, now my black is gone because it retains the lightest pixels of all the clips. Again, the next one we have is screen. That's the opposite of multiply. The next one happens to be overlay. And then the next one is difference. My black disappears again. This gives a very interesting look, though, to letters, you notice, uh, as it does the math. And so when I play this one, if I wanted a unique kind of lettering, I could blend my uh, track here with the letters. And I like this gray here. Uh, although you notice the green changes according to the background. It's not according to the entire scene, but it varies according to what's behind the pixels. But a rather interesting effect there. And then the last one is hue. And we don't see much use for that one here. Let me give you another option of what you can do. I'm going to go to this segment here. And right now, I actually have the same video clip playing on track number one and track number two. And this is the natural clip. We have the guys in the boat going down the river. But there's something very interesting you can do with this. If you change the blending mode and highlight the bottom clip, and I'm going to go from normal to screen, watch what happens. It really does change the color mix as I went to the screen mode. This is where the brightest pixels are retained and the darkest pixels become transparent. So the difference between screen, I'll turn off that track, and not screen is quite interesting. Here's another example using the same technique. I have two clips of this video of these women meeting in the hallway and discussing something. So when I pause it here, I'm going to take the lower clip highlight this again, go to Tools, Power Tools, and Blending Mode. And then we'll go back to the same one we used with the canoe. I'll use Screen, and you notice how it simply intensifies things. Uh, it gives a nice, brighter look to that particular clip. Let me give you one other one that's rather odd but interesting. Is Now I have a, a clip here of the same gals in the office, then I have a clip below. It's just a blue gradient. Right now I'm in my normal mode. If I highlight the lower clip and click on my power tools, go back to blending mode, I'm going to pick, uh, go from normal to hue. And now it looks like we're in a scene of aliens where the skin colors, as well as some other features of it, have taken on the, the hue of the underlying clip. So if you want to do something rather interesting, different, otherworldly perhaps, uh, this would do that in this particular case. Now you notice it, it covers more than the skin tones, it covers other items as well. But that's another example of some things that you can do. So experiment with the blending mode and see what kind of unusual effects you might be able to add to your clips 
in CyberLink Power Director. 